Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. The plants from Carol have arrived, and in an exchange of emails, Carol has explained that she won't have anything for the plants. Treat it as a donation to the channel. On the grounds that I'd happily accept somebody buying me coffees as a donation to the channel. But what did worry me was the physical amount of effort that Carol put in. It wasn't so much the, the value as such, it was the effort that had been put in. A whole day's work basically to get these plants out of the ground. Eternally grateful and they will make a major contribution to that part of the garden. So next year that garden, that bit of the garden is going to look pretty, pretty good. Right from late winter right through to the following autumn. You don't want to let go, do you? You will, you know, it's inevitable. It's only a matter of time. Right, there's a lot of greenery in here. I expect a lot of these plants to be wilted. We've got a lot of bugs in here as well. And I don't know what those are, but I'm not happy with those. I'll have to keep my eye out. They look like thrips to me. Right, so as I said, there, there's going to be a lot of wilted plants in here that hopefully, you know, once they get in the ground and get some water around them, that they will pick up. Right, this is a nice um, pale coloured geranium. Lovely blooms. And that's a good piece of plant. It might even be more than one piece of plant. But if it's not more than one piece of plant, it will be. <laughs> I'll split that if it's not already pieces. So that can go into uh, several different places. And we've got another geranium here. Now, although this hasn't got blooms on, I'm assuming this was the blue one. Because I said I like the pale one and I like the blue one. So that's probably the blue one. We will assume, and hanging out the top of that bag, Uh, probably a primrose. <laughs> so I'll have to wash out, you know, there's more than one thing in some of the bags. Right, these plants are all going to go into the coldest room I've got and the coldest place I've got, which is the downstairs toilet. It has no windows, it has no heat, and I don't use it much at all. I tend to use the upstairs bathroom which is like part of the house, isn't it? And that's a cold room, it's got no windows, an outside wall, it's part of that alleyway, and it always is cold. So, uh, now this is, a, this is a large bag of primroses, there's no need for me to get these out and disturb them. These are primroses, so those are our native primrose. And that is probably as many as I got last time, again, if not more. Greatly appreciated, one of my favourite wildflowers of, of, the, of the spring, along with bluebells, primroses. Now she did say that some of, them, some of the plants are going to have bent leaves because they wouldn't go in the box. Right, now we've got a nice fern here and something else in there that's not a fern. And I don't know what it is, so we won't worry about that at the moment. As I said, I don't want to get all this stuff out of the bags and disturb them. Uh, but that's a nice fern anyway, I love ferns. You get a combination of ferns, bluebells and primroses and it's pretty special. It just signifies woodland. Ah, and that's a heart's tongue fern. Again, one of my favourites. Beautiful green leaves when they first open. Ferns, now we got... <laughs> This, the nickname for this is Elephant's Ears. Um, it has large green leaves um, with red edging off, often. Um, sometimes that edging becomes quite dominant. And it has lovely flowers on um, as well. Again, another plant for a shady area. Right, what have we got now then? Ah, this is some more of the um, hellebores that we had last time. I said I quite like the dark one, so we've got a few more of those. That. We're not even halfway down the box yet. 
ah, that's sedum, sedum, however you want to say it, um, a real butterfly magnet, and it, it grows pretty well, you know, so it, it, there's several pieces there, so we'll get that. That needs the sun, so I'm going to try planting that in part of the gravel bed, where it gets half a day sun, and if it becomes established and it's okay, then I can split it again, you know, down the line. <laughs> I'm trying to pick up one at the bottom of the... What on earth is that? That's bulbs. So I'm not quite sure what those are. And again, I don't... Oh, I suppose I can undo the bag and always do that again, can't we? So this is bulbs. See, I might have to go back to the list and sort of process of elimination. Well, I've seen that, I've seen that, I've seen that. Oh, that must be that then. <laughs> I think they're snowdrops. I think they're snowdrops. I know Carol said that um, most of the snowdrops have gone over now. And of course, the ground that they occupied is now covered with other stuff, so you can't find them. <laughs> but that looks like that's snowdrops. And if it is, they're lovely large bowls. And if it's not, then it'll be something else, and I'll find out what later. And what's that? I don't know what that is. I'll have to look that up. But it's actually got, whatever it is, it's got several other things mixed up with it. I'm not sure what that is. I don't know. Oh well, as I say, I'm, I'm not a big plants person. If that was Rachel, she'd go, oh, how can you know what that is? How can you not know what that is? <laughs> well, I don't, you know. I know a lot of the, you know, the nicknames for plants are aquilegias, little bee magnets. Now I said I like the pale coloured one and the deep purple one, so we've got some of each. That's good. These flowers will be going over soon. Quite honestly, when I plant these out, I'll probably cut those spikes off. I know it's a shame, but you know, it's a strain on the plant to try and keep everything hydrated when it's the um, it's the leaves that are the most important thing and getting some roots down into some soil. What on earth is that? That's violets, I can see what that is. So that's more violets and that's a lot. That's good because I can spread those around now because the, in the last lot I only had one clump and I planted it as a single clump. Um, what have we got now then? This looks like foxgloves. Yeah, foxgloves. And again, you know, the, the flower spikes have been bent a bit. They might straighten up, or they might not. But, you know, we shall see. So that's more foxgloves. That's a broken aquilegia spike. We won't be planting that. <laughs> that won't grow. That's the, I'm just going to put it in there for now. Petals everywhere. Ah, oh, and this is, um, this is some more sedum. Um, this looks more like what I was expecting rather than the other stuff. Um, that, so that other stuff might not be sedum, but that is. And that has, yeah, come to think of it, that doesn't look quite right. It tends to have a, like a dome of pink flowers on this stuff. It grows out of walls and in strange places in the wild. And it's an absolute butterfly magnet. Rather than a bee magnet, it's really... The butterflies really go mad for it. Right, getting down near the bottom now. Right, another foxglove there. I presume that's what that is. Compare leaves. Hmm. Well, if it isn't, I don't know what it is, but it looks like another foxglove. <laughs> uh, and then this looks like even more foxgloves. Oh. Yeah, that's more foxglove. So we can have a good spread of foxgloves along the back of that border because they're tall. They give it height. And they'll come up above everything else. And then we've got another fern. Good, I love ferns. Pop that down there. And we've got a few more ferns in here as well. We've got, oh, blimey. 
<laughs> That's two different ones in there. Um, that looks like Royal Fern. I mean, I don't know names of ferns that well, and that's a lovely um, sort of, uh, you know, shuttlecock type fern, I call it, where all the leaves come out evenly spaced round a circle and then arch away from it. So that's that. And that is it. Now I'm going to have to put them back in the box because if I try and carry them in my little tray, I just put that there to have somewhere to put them. If I try and carry them in there, they're going to fall off. So I'll put them back in the box for transportation. And then, as I said, they're going to go in my downstairs toilet until tomorrow morning. Now we are going to have to offer up a metaphorical prayer to the bat gods. Because that's a lot of plants. And I know that my back twinged a fair bit planting the last lot. Um, and this is more. And in addition to that, I'm not starting from scratch. I'm starting with a back that's not too clever at the moment. So we might get part way through and just have to stop. But I really want to get these in the ground as quick as possible and get them heavily watered in. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get a bucket of um, the potting compost that I've got, you know, which is quite fibrous and does have some goodness in it sort of thing. I'm going to get a bucket of that so that when I've dug a hole for each of those, I'm going to put a couple of trowelfuls of that in and mix it in with the, with the actual soil that's there. It gives them like a head start. I didn't think to do it last time, but I think I will this time. So, brilliant. I'm surprised these ferns... I mean, this, this fern has wilted quite badly, um, but it has got new growths. This one hasn't wilted at all. It's got a broken growth but you, know. you can't expect to transport this amount of plants inside a box without getting a few leaves squished. And then we've got another fern there. So that's that's at least three different ferns so far. That's good. And then that's definitely sedum. Fox gloves. See these these have, would have been better trans transplanted two months ago when they were only that high. But they've been disturbed, and if that means the flower spikes bend over and stay like that and the blooms go, come out sideways, so be it. So be it. At least they're in the ground, and if the blooms open okay, they'll get an opportunity to seed. The bees will absolutely love them. Um, these, uh, some bees like these, but not all bees, because of the shape of the bloom. Um, so some bees can actually use these um, and other bees can't, but um, yeah, I've always liked those and I especially like the deep purple one, but the, the pale coloured one is interesting too. Right, so that's the bulbs, and we've got the hellebores. There's, there's quite a bit of non-thinking going on here because I've already planted the last lot of hellebores and they all went in the same place because it's the place that gets the least amount of hours of sunshine. So those will just go in with those. <laughs> they can just go next to the ones that are already there to just make a better clump, you know, a, more of it. Elephant's ears, um, these grow quite large. I don't know whether that's one or more than one plant, but we'll know when we get it out. Any that are already split up will go in two places. Uh, that looks like it's more than one fern, Pout's tongue fern that is. Um, there's a hybrid Hark's tongue fern that I saw in a garden centre that had four foot fronds. That's, that'll be the wild one. And then we have another little delicate fern there. So, so that's one, two, three, four, five different ferns we've got there. Well, that's good. A load of violets, so they can be dotted around near the front of the border and possibly put a few more in that bit I did around Elvis. <clears throat> and we don't know what that is. We'll have to have a look at the list. I've got a clue what that is. We'll find out. Same process of elimination. Most of the things that have come out of the box, I know what they are, 
This is one I don't really know what it is, but it'll be one, one of the ones that I haven't identified so far, if you see what I mean. I know what I mean. But whatever it is, it's a good piece of it, and it, you know, it's got blooms on. And that was more primroses. Now I wonder why that has been wrapped up separate and put in a separate bag. Maybe that's not a primrose. It flipping looks like one. But it's been done separately. Because this is a bag of primroses. So why is that one different? Well, we'll put it in with, with the primroses. The fact that it's got like a bit of something <laughs> tanky around it, um, it'll remind me to keep it separate. So that if it is something different, it is separated out. I'm running out of room here. Of course, these were layered. I'm standing them up this time. And, uh, and those are the geraniums. I've already got at least two different geraniums here. Um, one of them comes up through this ivy down there. It's not in flower yet, and the flowers are gorgeous. That was already here. And another geranium that came out of a pot that came from my old place. And that has bluish flowers on. Um, and it's a... Yes, what can we do for you? Cheeky monkey. I presume you can see that. What a lovely cat. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm going to have to go and shoo him off. Uh, never mind. Um, you know, it, it, it'll upset Mojo if he starts making a habit of it. So he'll shoo him off. Ooh, acrobatic. That was quite a young cat. He went straight up the tree, straight across the shed and on into next door somewhere. Gone, but not forgotten. Right, so there we go. That is a hell of a box full. Thank you so much, Carol. Um, and as I said, get these, get these planted. Hope that they take, because we've got at least a week of sunny days and relatively warm temperatures and no sign of rain for at least a week. So I'm going to have to keep the water, you know. And as I said, by using some potting compost in the hole with the soil that's already there, which is quite fibrous anyway, I just have to keep them wet. Make sure their roots are nicely placed and not all chunked up together. And um, just do the best I can with them and hopefully they take. Everything I planted before I think has taken, I'm a bit iffy with the um, snake's head fritillaries. Not sure about them. <laughs> They've died right back to nothing, definitely, but then I think they do that anyway. Um, we shall see. Next year will be the telltale thing. They'll either come up next year or they won't. So thanks a bunch again for this lot, Carol. Um, greatly appreciated. Um, as a donation to the channel, if I'd gone to a garden centre and come away with this, we'd have been well up into three figures. Well up into three figures because they're mature pieces you know if you buy a foxglove in a garden center you'll just get like a, that you know that's all you'll get so um, greatly appreciated we'll get these spread around and I can I can tell already that an awful lot of that border now is going to have plants in it as opposed to how it looks now which is mostly bare soil and a lot of that's where I cut the bushes back because <laughs> nothing got planted there because of the bushes. Now I've cut the bushes back, there's bare ground, which is, that's what this is for. So that's video one of two. The next one will be going round looking at where I planted them, basically. And I might wait and just do a, a general garden update. Um, where, what are we, what date wise now? What am the date? I don't know. My thing over there doesn't tell me, does it? It's about the 24th, isn't it? Whereas I said I would do a regular garden update at the beginning of the month. So anyway, we shall see. No decision made. Again, thanks a bunch. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely. And five different types of ferns as well. They are some of my favourites because of the pure green. Um, I'd have, quite honestly, I, if I had a big enough garden where I could have rooms, I would have a green room where there was only greens and it would be things like ferns. 
and some types of shrubs and things. And there wouldn't be a bloom in sight in that room. I'd have some aces, you know, some maples. And I'd just have green and all the different shades. Uh, and definitely have a beech tree with their nice new green leaves. Okay, there we go then. Um, this is now the third video I've done today. Um, it is Wednesday. These arrived on time. Uh, two minutes before one, in fact. <laughs> supposed to be delivered by one o'clock. Well, two minutes to one is before one o'clock. Good stuff. And um, straight out of Postman Pat's van into my hands and they will now go into the cool room. And um, if I can't get them all planted tomorrow, the box will come back in and go back in the cool room. It's cold, the coldest place I can possibly get them, and dark. So they should be okay in there. Right. As I said, that's the third video today. Um, they haven't all been posted, but you know, <laughs> it's been quite... I got this feeling that once I've done this gardening thing, I might be incapacitated for a while. So <laughs> having a few videos in hand might not be a bad idea. We shall see. And um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for dropping by. I know that's a gardening thing and not everybody's interested in the gardening stuff, but... Um, you know, it's, it's part of this whole thing. The orchids is the centre of the universe. You know, that doesn't change. Sideline into the bonsai. Sideline side into bringing this garden back to something manageable. Sideline into planting it up. Sideline going on trips to have a look at native orchids. You know, these are all part of the channel as such. So, uh, anyway, good stuff. Thanks a bunch, Carol.